Your haircut, sports, cars, or ice cream floats. And the most requires is to pay all your hires for an interdependent town. It's a small town after all. We're here to raise awareness of the fact that Disney pays poverty wages that contributes to the homelessness on the streets of Anaheim and the streets of the county, and that a multi-billion dollar corporation that uh, nets $9 billion in profits last year should be able to pay their employees a living wage so that they aren't homeless or food insecure. Disneyland is so big and it's viewed as this magical place, yet you go a block away and you're in some of the poorest neighborhoods in, in the whole city. It's a company that doesn't give back. It gives back minimally, minimally when it could do so much for the community. Cast members who've been at Disney for 30 plus years aren't even able to make um, their rent, their food insecure, and as taxpayers we subsidize this because when people fall below the poverty line as full-time workers, we end up having to cover the costs. And unfortunately those programs are currently underfunded, so people are starving, people are going without housing, um, families are having to choose overcrowded situations. Disney is the largest employer in Orange County, so they should be a leader and a role model in how to pay workers a living wage. They can definitely afford it. It's not going to bankrupt them. It's not going to cause jobs to be lost like like some of the naysayers are saying. I don't believe that. I believe that when we pay employees a living wage, everybody does better, the economy does better. And raining out here um, they're, they're kind of posted up in the riverbed here so you know they're they're, they're to protect their stuff they, you know, they have nothing to stay dry with nothing to you know keep out of the rain so we're trying to provide them with some tarps and some clothes some dry clothes at least yeah so we're down here right next to Angel Stadium you know probably one of the richest places in the world and you got people that are living under the bridges in the in the riverbed Johnny, Johnny I'm Milo good to meet you Johnny how you doing they feel invisible, you know what I mean? Like people don't see them, you know what I mean? So sometimes just, I mean, like earlier with the guy with Johnny, you know what I mean? I just ask him how, what his name is and shake his hand and let him know that I see him, you know what I mean? That, that I'm here, that, you know, he's not alone, you know, even though he feels alone most days probably, but, you know, that, you know, we see him, we, we recognize his struggles. It's raining and um, some of the water gets washed into the riverbed, so they're all talking about picking up their tents and their camps and moving on and, um, and they're not invisible, they matter. Like, they should matter, and we should be thinking about them. And we're all a decision away, or a, you know, a life circumstance away from possibly being there, so. See, you know what, it's just like, you guys come down like this, like listen to us for a second, and, and don't look like this, or look up, you're looking at us. Just make you know, okay, look, you're gonna make it another right. day going. You know because what I mean? Because you know this, like that means everything. I mean, just to, to me. come down here, and you don't even have to bring anything, just to listen to us, or just to ask us our name, and be looking directly at us, not down or up I at know. us. There needs a support by the community um, who can take those people to such places. So connecting um, resources to how to use those resources, I think that's where more volunteers can help people. Um, so I was involved with um, JMH, uh, Love Anaheim. It's a non-profit organization uh, with my local church, Magnolia Baptist Church. And what they were trying to do was uh, to provide, working with the city, CityNet, uh, provide jobs for homeless people. So two purposes, I think, um, give them to have a better routine, like get up in the morning, go to work, and get some <laughs> like better routine instead of just being homeless to be be done being okay to be homeless or just being in shelter uh, also um be it, it was called better way anaheim but we helped them to get connected to chrysalis and uh, they 
help them how to write resume or how to use a computer, uh, apply for any job. So um, organization, so Better Way Anaheim, CityNet, Chrysalis, those are the organization we try to work with. When I was working with the organization, we would work with shelters like the Salvation Army. Once they are settled in those low-income apartments, there's this huge gap for them to keep the job and move to the next level, like other apartments. So we need something between, it's just like cost of living is going up, uh, apartment rent is so high. So I just find from here, so unhoused to settling into shelter or low-income apartment to <laughs> the next step, I find there's a huge gap. I just feel that like, okay, from homeless shelter to low income, like they need something between, cause I think they are at the point, okay, you, they are out of homeless shelter, now has a low income apartment, you can pay the rent based on the income, but they cannot go from here to the next level. So it ends up that they kind of settle at the mindset, okay, I cannot make more than this much. Otherwise, if I make more than this much, they disqualify. <laughs> it's very ironic, but that can be an issue kind of stopping them to move on, maybe get like work more hours or more work for better paying job. I think once they disqualify, then they may go back to homeless again because there's no way they can afford other apartments. I think city of Anaheim, you know, city of kindness, they are trying to do a good job and I think um, people are teaming up very well. Um, another issue I started seeing, uh, city of Anaheim, we had lots of Spanish speaking people, lots of people bilingual, but I see more diversity, uh, limited English, so that could be another next level. Maybe we need more resources in other languages other than Spanish. I'm Anaheim Mayor Harry Sidhu. Welcome to Anaheim Emergency Shelter. This is California's investment in homelessness in action. It opened three years ago with both city and state funding. Since then, it has helped hundreds of people get off the street and find support and resources. No one should have to live on the streets of Anaheim. It is inhumane and it is unfair to neighborhoods and businesses which suffer unintended impacts. We have stepped up to the challenge and made it one of our own city's top priorities. And since 2014, we have helped nearly 5,000 people off the street and onto a lasting pathway out of homelessness. Since 2018, we have opened four shelters all of them in a matter of weeks and months. The next chapter of Anaheim's own journey to address homelessness is Center of Hope. Center of Hope is a complete solution to homelessness that will provide shelter, supportive housing, and medical and dental care. Disneyland is known as the happiest place on earth. We all know that, but Riders who catch a bus near the resort might not be so happy. And CBS Orange County reporter Michelle Geely explains what the city of Anaheim is doing that affects bus riders and the homeless. Michelle? You know, you guys, a lot of the bus riders that come to this stop here are workers in the resort, whether it be Disneyland employees, people who work in the hotels or the restaurants, and certainly they'd love to come here to the bus stop after a long day's work and sit down on a bench. There's something missing at four busy bus stops near Disneyland on Harbor Boulevard in Anaheim. I think it's a good idea because if I was riding the bus, I wouldn't want a bunch of people hanging around, begging for money and sleeping around the bus bench. The bus benches that the city says were taken over by the homeless have been removed. 
This may be what's installed near Disneyland. These stools were put in here on Beach Boulevard at a bus stop to combat the problem, and they may start showing up at other spots around town. Striking a balance is what Anaheim leaders are hoping for. Encampments at the bus stops created problems for bus riders. There were dogs and trash, drinking and panhandling. Spokesman Mike Lister tells me Anaheim has resources for the homeless who are willing to accept them. Now, for the folks that may have been at these bus shelters, our heart goes out to them too. We realize that they may not have other places to go right away, but we actually have options for them. Twice a week, a task force comes through this Anaheim resort looking for the homeless. They carry essentials, they carry a kit with toiletries. They bring that to these people. They also offer them a place to sleep that night indoors, as well as health care and a permanent home. It can take weeks. The homeless may take this task force up on their offer, and then again, sometimes they don't. That's the latest live in Anaheim. I work in Orange. As soon as I cross the riverbed, Orange is clean. Mm -hmm. Anaheim's full of crap. Why can't you say that exactly warm? Some of them are crazy, drug addicts, worthless losers. Some of them, like the girl you're talking about, you can help. Somebody's got to sort through them, and there's got to be punishments. I can't, I shouldn't have to walk down my street seeing people smoke crack, doing whatever the heck they want to do. And you're telling me you're spending the most money of any city, but you were born in the worst cities for homelessness. We I don't understand how some cities are clean. We, and I bet you I go to Anaheim Hills, there's not homelessness like it is here. <laughs> in Anaheim is all homeless. I'm, sometimes I want to go buy tents and go set them up in a park in Anaheim Hills. Yeah. And all of you guys come over here. You yeah. happen to live in a nice neighborhood. Yeah. You know what they tell everybody? You guys aren't doing anything any wrong. Crime. Not advocacy. Nothing at all. Okay. No. 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 Around here and today, uh, uh, what was the name of that place? City Neck came up to me today and asked me if I wanted to uh, go into a shelter. I, I got on their housing list to try to get housing, you know. So I don't know how long a wait that's going to be. California has been uh, seeing the brunt of a lot of the unsheltered homelessness uh, issues across the nation. Uh, specifically in Anaheim, what we've come to realize that it's a multifaceted approach and definitely uh, being unsheltered, being homeless is not in and of itself a crime. And we thought it was important that we made sure that we provided the resources that need to be involved. So uh, from mental health, to outreach and engagement, to navigators, to be able to help individuals and provide the sources they need and bringing the sources out into the street. So in the city of Anaheim, we've collaborated and um, have a um, separate entity called the Community Care Response Team, which is CityNet. The city contracts with uh, these outreach workers, these uh, navigators, and they contact uh, individuals on a daily basis, on a regular basis, seven days a week. Um, to pr provide that service and provide the resources. In addition to that, we also have a contract with the OLOC, and that looks at the, the mental health issues as well. So making sure that we're looking at alternative resources to respond to um, calls for service where um, it's just a complaint of um, homelessness or unsheltered, because again, it's not in and of itself a crime. Um, so we want to make sure that we provide the right resources to those calls. Well, the reality is that uh, unhoused and the uh, homeless individuals touches pretty much every part of our city departments, from the fire department to the police department to the parks and recs, um, so uh, public works as well. So we work as collaboratively together to address the issues and share resources oftentimes. Uh, but we do have a uh, city of Anaheim does have uh, shelters um, that, uh, that uh, we work in collaboration with the Salvation Army. So we have uh, both uh, uh, shelters uh, partnerships and work with other entities to provide, again, temporary housing as well as looking at uh, transitional housing as well. But really the focus is, is uh, in addition to the shelters, is the services um, and the resources. Because oftentimes a lot of the individuals that are uh, unhoused have different challenges in addition to economic challenges. There's oftentimes mental health, 
there's um, drug addiction. Um, so there's other factors that come into play. So it's imperative that when we start looking at how do we respond, it has to be a multifaceted. It can't just be shelters alone. It can't just be services alone. It has to be a combination of both as well. There is, and we do that in multiple different ways. We do it both formally and informally. We work with the county as well, um, with the point in time con uh, counts, and obviously with those surveys that, ha that the county does, um, we look at what services are needed out there because for us it's imperative in order for us to be able to respond to the needs, we need to know what those challenges are. So it's imperative for us to hear from those individuals that are unhoused and uh, homeless to be able to hear firsthand what are the needs and challenges so we can better address them.